as if it's been three weeks since I have sat down here to record and chat to you guys. Also, I'm not wearing my headphones to record this episode and it feels really weird. It feels really freaking weird not being able to hear myself. So I don't know if the audio is peaking or not. I've just gone back to re-listen and it seems okay hopefully. But the main reason I'm not wearing my headphones is because I wanted to wear my brand new beanie. I am so obsessed with it and I wanted to show you guys in today's episode. So this is the black version of the green beanie that launched on To Nurture Your Soul last year, which is insane. I can't believe that the green version of this beanie came out last year. Where has the time gone, you know? Time flies when you're having fun. So yeah, I am currently wearing the black version. If you're watching on YouTube, you will be able to see. I think it's so freaking cute. And dare I say it, it may be my new favorite instead of the green one, which is a lot for me to say because green is my everything. So the black version as well as a brown version is now available on the store. If you guys haven't already, make sure that you go ahead and shop if you'd like to get one. There's limited quantities available. I think I only have five of each color and once they're gone, they're gone. So I'm super excited about it and I really wanted to wear mine today in today's episode to show it off and share it with you all. So other than that, as you can probably tell if you're watching the YouTube video, I am very chill today. Normally I sit here with you guys with like a full face of makeup on and I have like, I don't know, I put like effort into the way that I look when it comes to recording the podcast. But today I just wanted to sit down. I wanted to have a chit chat catch up episode. So I'm not really wearing any makeup and I am wearing the most basic bitch outfit ever. Literally just a white top. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I just wanted all of the cozy vibes to be able to sit down and catch up with you all after my trip, which I genuinely cannot believe that the past three weeks of my life is over. Like, I feel like I blinked and it was just gone. It's insane. And I knew, I knew that it would go fast, but sitting here right now, being back in my home, like back into work and, you know, creating content, making stuff for Tonight Your Soul, just like getting back into my normal routine here, it feels so weird. Like, if someone came up to me and said, you haven't been on that trip yet, I would be like, yeah, no, I haven't. I leave like next week. Like, that's how crazy fast it went. It feels like it didn't even happen. So that's what we are going to be chatting about today. I just wanted to catch you guys up on life at the moment. And I just wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about all of the different things that I learned while traveling on my own, which is insane. Like I cannot believe I got my butt on a plane on my own as someone who has never, ever, ever traveled to a different country other than Bali. I've been to Bali with my family in 2019, but other than that, I have never, ever, ever left the country. So it was a massive experience for me, one that if, you know, Lacey from two, three years ago knew that she would be doing it, should be losing her mind. Like if I if I tried to do this two or three years ago, I genuinely think I wouldn't have been able to do it. My anxiety would not have allowed me to. So it's just so crazy and so cool that I can sit here and like be proud of myself for doing that when I know that me from a few years ago wouldn't have. Like it's just really cool to sit down and be able to recognize the growth within myself from the effort that I've put in to bettering my mental health and bettering who I am as a person for myself and for my future self and for future experiences just like this one. Like I am so proud of myself at the end of the day and I feel extremely, extremely lucky to have been able to afford to do this trip, to even be able to do the trip at all. To be honest, as always, before we get into today's episode, I will quickly mention that we do have a email that for future episodes, if you have any topics that you would like me to talk about, any questions or anything weighing on your heart that you would like to put out into the universe and you would like me to read on the pod, then definitely go ahead and email to nurture your soul podcast at gmail.com. That is the email that I check every single day whenever I am planning out future podcast episodes. So if you'd like to be featured, in the next episode, then definitely make sure to send your topic suggestions, questions, or, you know, paragraphs through 
to there. So yeah, other than that, if you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And if you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, then please don't forget to follow along. Make sure that you are following the podcast so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. Make sure you're following the YouTube channel. I also do like vlogs and just like little random videos every now and again on the YouTube channel too. I think that that's all my promo the <laughs> beginning of this episode. I also want to say a massive, massive thank you to all of you who have been so patient with me over the past few weeks with me taking proper time off to myself even though I feel like the time went so so quickly and I was talking about this on TikTok live last night as well all of you were saying that the time went so quickly for you as well but I just genuinely wanted to say that I'm so so grateful that you guys are allowing me to take the time off for my personal life for my mental health for my relationships and stuff like that um, I have never really been in a position in terms of my job before that allowed me to prioritize myself, my mental health and my relationships. So I'm just so, so grateful that you guys allow me to take the time to do that. And you are still here for me when I come back like that. It, it makes me so, so happy, especially on TikTok live last night. So many of you were like, welcome back. We missed you. We're so excited that you're back. And like, I just cannot tell you how much I appreciate that and how much that genuinely means to me. I guess with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's episode where I catch you guys up on what the past three weeks of my life has looked like and also all of the little bits and pieces that I have learned while traveling to the other side of the world on my own. I will never be able to say that sentence without just like... <laughs> genuinely freaking out in my head a little bit about it. I genuinely don't even know where to begin if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have no idea where to begin on the story of the past three weeks. I feel like I need to like go through my maybe my photos on my phone so that I'm getting like the timeline right and not missing out on any of the things that we did over the past few weeks. So starting off middle of June when did I leave? I, I left on the 22nd of June, right? I'm pretty sure that's the date that I left. I got myself on a train bright and early Thursday morning on the 22nd of June and I uh, made the trip to the Sydney airport. It was very overwhelming. I think the very first part of the trip, like the Sydney airport, going through all the customs and the security and like just going through all of that stuff for the very first time was super overwhelming. And then after that first time, like all of the other ones were so fine. So yeah, I got to the airport extremely early, like an hour before my check-in even opened. So I was very chill about it because I was so early. If you guys know me at all, I like to be extremely early for everything. Half an hour early to an event or an appointment is on time for me. Half an hour early, on time. So naturally for my flight and for check-in, I got there an hour early because this was a very important event that I did not want to miss. I got through the whole check-in process. I got through literally everything so easily. I think I was a little bit nervous because I was like, I've never done this before. I don't know how difficult it's going to be, but honestly, flying is so easy. Like the airport people, they just have made the process so incredibly easy. I ended up getting through to my gate and I had like ages, ages and ages until I had to board the flight. So I ended up getting McDonald's. This is like probably the most pointless part to the whole story. And if I go through in this much detail, I'm going to be here forever, but you know, it's fine. They had a conveyor belt in like their little like building bit. So you order the Maccas down the bottom, then the kitchen is up the top in this second story bit and they make your order, they package it up and then they clip it to a conveyor belt that like goes down and you see it. You see a little McDonald's order go down the conveyor belt and like drop off down the bottom and I was like, you know what? That's so freaking cool. Let me get myself some McDonald's so I can see my little package just like go in this really cute conveyor belt and I'm not one to really get McDonald's very often but I thought that that was so freaking cool so yeah after that little Macca's feed I boarded my first flight and I was on my way to Hong Kong Hong Kong was the destination where I had my layover on the way over there my layover was only an hour and 45 minutes which was 
perfect timing. It gave me the perfect amount of time to get off the plane, walk to the next terminal, line up, and then get on to the next one. So my first flight was a nine hour flight, which honestly wasn't too bad. It really, really wasn't. I didn't sleep at all I don't think because it was like Australian daytime um, but then when I got to Hong Kong it was like 1 a.m. so I got onto the second flight and I tried to sleep for as long as I possibly could um, I think I got like maybe five or six hours sleep which compared to the journey home was really really good in terms of airplane food obsessed absolutely loved it by the end of my trip and by the end of my flight home I was very very much over the Asian food because that was a lot of what the meals were but other than that I thought that it was great I loved it and I think because I'm used to doing just like domestic flights in Australia like from when I went to Melbourne a bunch or when I've been to Queensland I'm used to having to pay for things on flights and so the fact that all of this was for free I was like oh my god I'm living my best life we will talk about the flight on the way home after I've been through the whole trip because it was less nice. So I ended up arriving at like 6 a.m. London time. My partner came and picked me up. It was very exciting. I don't know how to describe the feeling of not seeing someone that you genuinely care about so, so much for months and then finally seeing them again. Like it's it, like it's a feeling that I will never, ever, ever be able to describe. And I know that she feels the same way we've like spoken about it heaps it's a weird feeling it's very very weird but in all of the best ways like genuinely the weirdest feeling but the best feeling so yeah after that we ended up going back to her house i dropped off all my stuff and then we went for a little walk around cambridge i'm just looking at all my photos now oh guys it's making me so sad <laughs> i'm so sad i'm so sad that i'm still not there but you know, we move, we keep going, you know, I will be going back in December, which I'm just trying to remind myself, you know, six more months and I'll be back living my best life over there again. But yeah, so we ended up going for our walk through Cambridge, which Cambridge is such a beautiful city. Is that what it's called? Is it a city? I think it's a city, right? The number one thing that I realized while walking through Cambridge was how beautiful the buildings are and how different the houses are too. The houses are something that are very, very different. I think it's one of the only things, to be honest, that is different about the two places is the buildings and the houses. So in Australia, the houses are very much either, you know, you live in an apartment or, you know, a complex of some sort where it kind of like levels up or you live in a house, like you have your own property, your own standing still house. Whereas in the UK, a lot of the houses are like stuck together. So it's like one big long building with like you know, five or six houses that are all lined up next to each other and the walls are like connected, which is so crazy to me. Like that was crazy. And then in terms of like the actual buildings, the buildings and the architecture is beautiful, like absolutely insane. I don't know. I just, I love how old the buildings are and the fact that they take the time to preserve things like buildings. Um, I don't think we really do that very much in Australia. Obviously, there's like certain heritage listed buildings that the council can't tear down because they're like special and old and whatever. But I feel like all of the buildings in the UK are like, I don't know, art pieces. And I don't know if that's like being a bit dramatic about it, but like that's truly what I think, you know? And I personally just think that's really cool. And I was admiring it and I was appreciating it because that is something that is very different compared to Australia, which is where I have been my whole entire life. We ended up going for food and coffee because I didn't feel jet lagged at this point, but I felt like I had vertigo or something. I like, I genuinely felt like I was wobbling and potentially gonna pass out, which I'm like, was that jet lag? And I was just like so excited about being there that I didn't feel tired. Or was it because I had been like on a moving plane for like 24, 24, to 30 hours like I don't know what it was but I felt like I was gonna pass out or fall over <laughs> it was very very weird so we ended up getting coffee and some food to 
see if that helped it did not <laughs> but it was really really nice i enjoyed that a lot we then went to a pub for my very first pint because yes when in the uk go to the pub for a pint love that for me it was really really nice i enjoyed it a lot and then we just did a little bit more walking around and that was pretty much the first day we took heaps of photos my camera roll is like so full from the first day then for the entirety of the first weekend we just did a bunch of fun little things around cambridge we went punting which is something that we had been talking about doing like ever since we kind of met if you guys follow my personal instagram you would have seen i have posted so many videos of when we were on the punts it was so much fun i think definitely one of my favorite things that we did throughout the whole trip so for those of you that don't know what punting is because i didn't know either it's just like a little boat like a little boat canoe and it like travels down the river and there's someone at the back of it like pushing it along we had a really really cool like punting person and he was telling us all about the colleges and like all the buildings around and like giving us genuinely interesting facts about Cambridge and about the river and you know all the schools and stuff which I found really interesting. I love learning about stuff like that. I think it's genuinely really, really interesting. So yeah, it was really, really cool to learn and it was beautiful to see. There was swans with like baby swans going down the river and it was just really a vibe. I loved it. And there was also like a separate little boat that was like a bar on the river. Like it was full of alcohol and you could just like pull up next to it and like order some drinks that is insane to me and i loved it i thought it was the most fun ever so yeah we did that which was really fun what did we do next i'm just like going through my camera roll oh we went to a fair there was a fair in town so we ended up going there and going on heaps of rides which was so much fun it was like 30 something degrees though which Guys, I've been talking for so long about this trip and how I was concerned about being cold when I went to the UK because, you know, the UK is known for being cold. But when I tell you that their temperatures don't match up with our temperatures, like, I, it, it couldn't be more true. And me and my partner were joking about this for literally the entirety that we've kind of known each other up until I went there. And she was saying, like, 25 degrees in the UK is hot and I'm like 25 degrees is not hot I promise you 25 degrees is like perfect weather like perfect room temperature amazingness and she's like no 25 degrees is hot I get over there 25 degrees over there is hot it's warm so if you can imagine 30 degrees honestly their 30 degrees probably feels like 35 degrees here it's weird I didn't believe it until I experienced it either, but now I know that I don't know what I don't know why it's like that. I don't know what the deal is. I think maybe the humidity is a bit higher over there. That's what I felt anyway. Like the air just felt like muggier when it was warm, if that makes sense. So yeah, we ended up going to this fair in 30 degree UK weather, which uh, 35 Australian degrees if I'm gonna be honest, is what it felt like. It was the most fun ever. It was really, really fun. We also had a really cute movie night out in her back garden, which I did fall asleep for. But I'm just gonna put it down to the fact that I had jet lag, okay? It was a few days after I arrived. I fell asleep at like 9 p.m. But in summer in the UK, which is what they are currently in at the moment, their sun does not set until like 10 p.m. at night which threw my body clock off a lot. I am so used to going to bed at 9 p.m. here because regardless of if it's winter or summer, 9 p.m. will always be dark here, you know? Darkness. Even in summer, I think the sun sets at like 8.30, maybe quarter to nine. But over in Europe, the sun does not set in summer until like 10 p.m. It was crazy. I was like falling asleep at 9 p.m. feeling like I was a grandma because it was still light outside, but that was just my normal sleeping time. I ended up like breaking out of that little habit after the first week, um, but yeah, I did fall asleep during our movie night, like maybe five, ten minutes into the movie. But it's fine. It's actually so fine. 
but regardless that was very very cute and i really really enjoyed it what else did we do we went to jack's gelato which is actually a recommendation that one of you guys told me to go to um the line was massive and to be honest i didn't really understand the hype don't come for me it's just my personal opinion um it was just like a normal gelato store Maybe I didn't get the right gelato. Maybe I was too full from my lunch and I didn't enjoy it as much. I don't know. It was just, it was normal gelato to me. Uh, mm, sorry if that offends anyone who's been there. It was, it was really, really good. And thank you so much to the person who recommended me to go and try it. I enjoyed it, but I just didn't see how it was any different from any other gelato that I've ever had. I don't know. What else did we do? I tried authentic British fish and chips, which was super fun. We went to a place called Hunt Stanton. Hunt Stanton. I feel like my accent is really going to kill that. Uh, and hopefully I said it right. I definitely didn't say it right. <laughs> it's like a little beach town area. And we did a bunch of arcades, which was so fun. The arcades in the UK. Uh, crazy. My inner child was going crazy um i feel like we don't have really big cool arcades like that in australia anymore i think we used to when i was little my dad used to take me to one in the city of newcastle but that's like the only memory that i have of like an arcade that's just as big as the ones in the uk and they have them everywhere like all along beach towns beach places so we played a few arcade games there and i got authentic british fish and chips which to be fair much better than fish and chips from anywhere else australians absolutely just make a mockery out of the fish and chip meal um it was really good it was very expensive for fish and chips i feel like fish and chips in australia probably because they're so shit everywhere you get them is like they're normally like one of the cheapest things that you can get for takeaway, but they were they were expensive uh, where we went. We also had a really cute date night at this place called the Willow Tree, I think, which is a place that have those like private domes. I feel like I'm seeing everyone on Instagram go to these private domes now. I've seen a few people that I know that live in Newcastle go to some, so I feel like maybe they're just like becoming really popular and they're like all over the place now but yeah we ended up going to one of those which was really freaking cool it honestly was beautiful so so beautiful the food was amazing the drinks were very strong <laughs> i think i had two drinks and i was like woohoo <laughs> yeah that was so cute so cute and so fun that was definitely one of my favorite parts of the whole thing as well the weekend after that so the second weekend that i was there we ended up going on a pub crawl which mm, the plan was to go to like six or seven pubs and if you know me once i've had a few alcoholic beverageinos i'm like no 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 the party does not stop at six we keep going so we ended up going to like 10 or 11 pubs while riding bikes to these different places by the way bikes in the uk insane they have no rules you can ride a bike without a helmet and you can drink and ride your bike and you can just you can do anything when you're on a bike really there is no rules for you if you are a bike rider in the uk it was insane to me i felt so free there was no rules and i was just going along living my best life so much to the point where we ended up going to like 10 or 11 bars we ended up having shots, we ended up drinking drinks with like double shots of liquor in them, and we got to one point where I may have potentially fallen off my bike. <laughs> Look, if you know me, you know I'm very uncoordinated. I shouldn't have been let on that bike in the first place, you know? Not my fault. I don't really have much more to say about it, to be honest. I face planted the pavement. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll pop a photo up <laughs> on the screen of my chin. It was bright purple for the whole next week. Super cute. So freaking cute. So yeah, that was an experience. It was so much fun though. We had so much fun. We got 
absolutely way too drunk like way way too drunk i have not been that drunk in a really long time because i genuinely try not to drink that much anymore because i did used to you know use and abuse alcohol i i just like for my own mental health try not to drink that much anymore but i genuinely had the best time like i think it was one of the only times so far in my life where i have just drunk alcohol not for the sake of trying to get rid of my anxiety or not for the sake of trying to mask any feelings that i have or i'm going through like i genuinely was just having the best time ever with my best friend and i don't know i thought that was really wholesome it was i don't know i really really enjoyed it a few days after that we went to brighton which I think was one of the biggest highlights of the whole trip too. I think the punting, the bicycle pub crawl and Brighton out of everything that I've mentioned so far are like my top. We walked around the lanes. We ended up going to the like iconic photo booth place in the lanes where Zoe Sugg goes a lot with like Mark and Alfie and her whole little family which we spoke about before I left the fact that I was going to meet Zoe or Alfie and I was manifesting that for me well I think I didn't actually realize how big Brighton is it is massive I don't know why I just thought like the lanes like cute little lanes like a couple little streets but genuinely the lanes in Brighton are huge like not just a couple of little lanes, like blocks on blocks on streets of streets. So running into a couple of YouTubers is a lot harder than one may think. So yeah, we got some cute little photos. I've pinned some up here. Hopefully they're like blurry enough to where you can't really see, but like I like kind of having them on my mirror there. I think it's really cute. And yeah, we just, we did a lot of walking, a lot of exploring. We went to Brighton Beach and Brighton Pier, which has been on my bucket list forever, like literally my whole entire life. We also went to the Brighton Beach Huts, which Again, another thing that I have wanted to do my whole entire life. I actually was on the phone to my mum last night and I had her propped up like just where I normally talk to people whenever I'm on FaceTime, which is randomly like right near my 2023 vision board. And I was talking to her about my trip and just like, I don't know, life in general. And I caught my vision board out of the corner of my eye and I was like, oh my God, I have the Brighton Beach Huts on my vision board for 2023 and I also had Brighton Pier and the Pebbly Beach at Brighton as well on my vision board and I was like like that is so so crazy to me that I put those on my vision board at the beginning of this year which is six months ago now literally insane and those things have come to fruition for me like that is insane i just sat there and i said to my mom i was like oh my god and i was like dreams really can come true if you just believe and you book a flight to the other side of the world really <laughs> that was so fun we ended up going to the upside down house as well which is another like prominent thing at Brighton Beach and that was really fun a lot smaller than what I thought it would be from like videos and photos that I've seen but just still really really freaking cool the next thing that we did after that was go into London with a group of my partner's friends um the plan was to go to all of the prominent sites in London so Big Ben the London Eye, Buckingham Palace, Chinatown, just all of the prominent landmarks in London. We ended up going to the big blue bridge, like we got a boat underneath that. I don't know what it's called. Don't come for me. Apparently it's a very important bridge. We also saw the London Eye and we went to Chinatown. We didn't really get to see Big Ben or go to Buckingham Palace, which is totally fine because it gives me an excuse to go back next time. And I feel like in the winter it could be really freaking cute so i'm definitely adding that to the list of things that i want to go and do next time i visit but yeah it was just it was a really really hot day it was another 30 degree day so you know 35 australian degrees is what it felt like um i was wearing jeans because at this point my fake tan had worn off and if you guys know me if you've been watching me for a while She's self-conscious of the pasty white legs when there is no self-tan on them. So I was walking around London in what felt like 35 degree heat wearing jeans. It was a lot. It was a lot. We did a lot of steps. I think 
in that whole day, we ended up doing over 16,000 steps, which was insane. We were walking for a very, very long time, but I'm so incredibly grateful for that day. I think London is beautiful and I am super excited to be able to go back and like do more of it. Things that I didn't go to do this previous time. I also enjoyed just getting to meet my partner's friends, hang out with them and you know, just hang out as like a big group. I'm not someone who really has big groups of friends. Like personally for me, I'm so happy with my, you know, one or two close people. So it was, it was different, overwhelming, but also very like just nice. It was really, really nice to hang out with a group of people because I don't do that. I'm not someone who does that. And I don't know, just nice to feel like I was a part of something or a part of a group. We also had a uh, night out in a place called Ely with my partner's two brothers, which was really fun. Oh, while we were in London, we went to a place called Fair Game, which is just like a big arcade where you can win this really cute pink teddy, which my partner was the only one who won the teddy out of everyone. I feel cheated though out of my pink teddy because I didn't understand how to play the game properly before I started. And if I knew how to play the game, maybe I would have won the teddy, you know? But I just didn't know. So that's my excuse for not winning a teddy. For the last few days of the trip, we kind of just chilled. My partner had to go to work for the last couple days. So I was just like relaxing, trying to get my last few holiday days in before I had a massive trip back home. I ended up leaving Heathrow Airport at... What time did I leave? 6 p.m. Yeah, so I left Heathrow Airport at 6 p.m. UK time and I ended up getting to Hong Kong and having a 10-hour layover. After the 10-hour layover in Hong Kong, I then had a eight and a half flight from Hong Kong to Sydney and I didn't sleep at all on that flight. And I think on the first flight, I only got like three or four hours sleep. So within the span of like two to three days, along with time changes, I had like three to four hours sleep, which... I am not someone who can do that. No, no. <laughs> um, it was a lot. I ended up getting back home Saturday night, Australian time, Saturday late afternoon, Australian time. Um, and as soon as I walked in my door at home, I cried, which I knew. I knew that that was going to happen. I knew that I was going to be the type of bitch to do that. Getting home after a massive, massive trip like that and having genuinely the best three weeks of my whole entire life I just kind of got home and I took a big deep breath and I was just like what <laughs> like what obviously that mixed with my lack of sleep <laughs> my four hours sleep within two to three days and the fact that I had just spent three weekends with my favorite person and now I have to spend three months without my favorite person in the whole entire world it was just a big it was it was, you know, a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> it was. I ended up having a market the day after I got home, which that was tough. That was really, really tough. And then as soon as I got home from the market, came home, had like an hour nap, forced myself to wake up, went to bed at, you know, my normal time, 9 p.m. And I have been totally fine since. So, it is currently Tuesday, the day that I am filming this, and I think that I am over the jet lag, over the emotional journey, and I'm finally starting to feel a little bit more like myself, which is so nice. It is, like, not the best feeling to not feel like your normal self, so I am extremely, extremely grateful to you know, be getting back into the swing of things. I think recording this episode of this podcast has been super helpful, more helpful to my mental health than what I I think I realized before sitting down to film this. I love sitting down and chatting to you guys. As you all know, it's my favorite thing. And sometimes I forget that until I actually sit here and I chat with you guys. I guess that is a now 45 minute sum up of the entirety of my trip and a little insight as to what I did over the past three weeks. If you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, definitely make sure to go and check out the YouTube video of this episode because I will try and edit in as many photos and videos on the screen as I can as I'm like explaining through everything that I've done. But all in all, I think the UK is 
such a beautiful country, such such a beautiful place. I, I'm just so grateful for every single part of my life at the moment. And I don't know, I think it takes moments like this where I sit down and reflect and like openly talk about experiences that I've had or gone through for me to like, I don't know, just, I don't know. Obviously I, I understand and I appreciate how grateful I am, but sitting down and speaking the things out loud, it's just like a whole nother level of gratitude that I feel. I do have a couple of little dot points written down of the things that I have learnt through doing this trip and just a few of the insights into the self growth that I have felt over the past three weeks from doing this trip. I literally just quickly wrote these down like five, 10 minutes before I press record on this episode. So I'm sure there is plenty, plenty more. So if you would like to hear me talk about it more in a separate episode, then definitely let me know in a comment. But yeah, I'm just gonna quickly go through these dot points. There's only four, so it's not gonna be too much longer. So the first thing that I have written down is that the world is only as big as you make it out to be in your mind, which is so true. Before going on this trip, going to the UK seemed like miles away to me. It seemed so, so far away that it was unattainable. But getting on those flights and like realizing that it only takes you, you know, 25 to 30 hours, which is like two days to get to the literal other side of the world is insane. You feel like it's, you feel like it's so far away. You feel like it's years away. You feel like it's miles and miles and miles away, which it is. But when you get on that plane and you realize that you can be on the other side of the world within a matter of two days, it's insane. The amount of confidence that it gives you to be able to realize that you can really go anywhere and you can do anything in the whole entire world. It really truly gave me the perspective that the world is only as big as you allow it to seem in your head. And I definitely feel like this can sprinkle through to all different aspects of your life. Like, I don't know, it's changed my perspective on everything. Like everything is only as big and as large as you make it out to be. Okay, so the next dot point I wrote down says, I truly am capable of doing anything I set my mind to, which kind of leads on from the next one. I can fucking do anything if I can get on a flight on my own and travel to the opposite side of the world. I can do anything. And that goes down to anything in life, like traveling, business, friendship, like personal growth and development. If I can get on a fucking plane, go through different countries that speak different languages, go through three days with four hours sleep, like I can do fucking anything. I can do anything. And I love that this trip has allowed me to see that and experience that. The second last thing that I have written down says, home is not a place, it's a feeling, which, oh man, this dot point made me emotional. The realization of this when I walked into Sydney airport was unlike anything else. Like realizing that home is not a place and it's a feeling Like, I will sit here and I will cry about it, just thinking about it right now. Like, walking into the Sydney airport, I have told this story to my mom, I've told it to my partner, like, and I will tell it to you guys now. Walking into Sydney airport and having all of the beautiful workers there, like, through security, through, like, just all the checks that you have to go through when you get to Sydney airport, having each different worker who checked my passport and my boarding pass and stuff, you know, check it and hand it back to me and say, welcome home made me want to cry and I did shed a few tears walking through the airport put my hoodie up probably looked like a right terrorist you know (laughs) but I yeah I was having a little emotional moment because I was like like that's not the feeling that I got when I walked into Sydney airport like I did not feel home because I realized that home is not a place it's a feeling and it's the feeling that you get around people that you know make you happy, people that make you feel loved, people that make you feel accepted. And those are the types of people that I had just spent the three weeks of my life surrounded by. I was surrounded by people that made me feel a sense of home. And that's very fucking cringy for me to sit here and say, but (laughs) that is genuinely something that I learned. And if you 
have a feeling that is tying you to a certain place because you feel like it's home, I strongly recommend that you try to find the, I don't know, I, I don't know what I recommend, actually. <laughs> you do you, boo, at the end of the day. But for me, personally, I realized that home is not a physical place. Like, of course, Australia is my home and it will forever and always be my home because I love it here and it's a very, very beautiful country to live in. I 100% acknowledge and appreciate that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Home to me is not a physical place. And I think that that is such a freeing thing to realize for me personally. And the very last thing that I have written down says taking time off is important for your mental health, which is something that I talk about all the time and obviously so true. You hear it all the time and it's so incredibly true. Taking decent time off from work, from side hustles, from hobbies even is so incredibly important for your mental health. I think the reason that this episode is so freaking long and I'm able to talk so much is because I've had a break, you know, for the past three weeks. I haven't sat in this little spot and chatted to you all. So it allows room for creativity and growth and for ideas to blossom and come to fruition and I don't know. I just think it's very, very important to take a step back, even if it's just to like reevaluate or spend time with family, like anything. It's it's very important to take time off. And every single time I do take time off, I am reminded of that because my mental health thrives. Those are all of the things that I have written down on my little piece of paper here of all the things that I could think of this morning that I learnt while on this little trip that I have been on, um, it's insane to me that <laughs> it's over. And I know that I went on about that in the beginning, so I'll try not to go on about it now. I don't know. I am in such a positive place in my life at the moment in terms of personal development the most, I think. Like personal development and growth has been a massive, massive thing for me over the past few weeks and I just feel like I am so aligned right now. I think that is everything that I have to update you guys on in today's episode. If you take one thing away from today's episode, I think it should be book that trip or do that one thing that you are a little bit nervous about doing because you don't think that you can do it on your own because I promise you once you just jump in, dive in the deep end, you are so much more capable than what you think that you are. And I think that just comes back to the limiting beliefs that we all have. We all have limiting beliefs and it is difficult to push them to the side and say, you know what, fuck you. Like, I'm just going to jump in and do life the way that I want to do it. But I think that if you can push past those limiting beliefs, you will shock yourself at all of the different things that you can do and you will be so, so proud of all of the different things that you can achieve and do as well. So I don't know. That's like the main thing, I guess, from today's episode. I'm so proud of myself for <laughs> what I have just done over the past few weeks. And I'm so grateful of the perspective that it has given me on certain aspects of my life. This is the end of today's episode, you guys. I am so freaking excited to be back. So, so excited filming these episodes are my favorite things. You guys know my favorite time of the week. And I am so, so glad that you guys have been loving these episodes as well. Um, I had a girl come up to me at the market on Sunday, which if you're listening, I you have no idea how much that made my whole day. I was extremely jet lagged, extremely jet lagged. And you coming up to me and saying how much you love the podcast and just everything, it genuinely made my whole entire day. And there was a couple girls on TikTok last night as well who had been saying that they'd been listening to the podcast. Like, I just appreciate all of you so much and I wouldn't be sat here doing this if it wasn't for you guys. If you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, please don't forget to follow along. I upload brand new episodes of the podcast 7.30 a.m. every single Friday, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So make sure that you're following along so that you don't miss out on any of the future episodes. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I love you all very much and I will talk to you all in the next episode.